Um, I actually took a look when I sat down to do this at, at six cases, Centro, Hanover, Feltex, Nathan's, Bridge Corp, and Lombard, partially because they're in the news. And uh, the first cut that I made in, in thinking about this was um, I eliminated all of those where I felt that there was uh, a lack of integrity involved. Uh, some of us do make a living by walking over hot coals. That's a whole different situation. Uh, if you find yourself in that situation, come see Michael, come see me. But those are different things. Um, I was much more focused on uh, cases where there isn't mens rea, criminal intent, and I was much more focused on um, medium-sized companies. Um, I, I take it by the fact that there are a couple of hundred of you here that you're not all the CFOs at the top 20 companies in the country. Uh, and therefore, we have different problems in a medium-sized business or a small-sized business in terms of who does what. Um, and I wanted to focus a little bit on the CFO piece of this. Um, there's been a huge amount of attention in uh, legal circles, in governance circles, and in accounting circles on these cases. But leaving those three pieces aside, uh, what do CFOs get out of this? Um, I don't think that these cases are uh, adding much to law, I don't think they're adding much to governance, and I don't think they're adding much to uh, management debates. They are highly specific facts, uh, the honest cases, um, and one of the things that I wanted to highlight, um, something that Joan mentioned, uh, you know, the opposite of cui bono, who gets the benefit, is who gets the blame. And uh, particularly in Centro, it's interesting to note that the CEO got fined specifically, the CFO got a um, disqualification order, and the directors who were deemed to be working honestly shared some costs. So the major hit in these was on management and particularly on the CFO, which is something you should focus on a bit. Um, I've got a slide which, with any luck, goes on to talk about some basic guidelines. They have been repeated. I, I put a little gloss on some of them. What's incredible about these, and, and whether they're five or seven or nine, is it's actually incredible to think that companies of the size and structure that were involved in these cases missed them, missed any of them. Most of them missed all of them. Um, it is incredible um, that you could have a structure uh, in, in an honest framework, in a dishonest framework, people miss a number of these, but you actually need to focus on how few prosecutions there have been in New Zealand and how egregious the behavior is. Um, it's actually worthwhile to go back and see when directors have been fined or hit, and I would warrant that you would not recognize the types of companies represented by you all in this room at all. They are at the far end of the spectrum. One of the reasons that these five or six cases uh, have caught the attention of people is that they express, I think what Joan was talking about, a sort of a, a worldview of the moment, a zeitgeist among the public, among journalists especially. They have a, a man bites dog feel to them. They don't feel right that, that honest people can be caught up by these things. And leaving aside differences in Australian and New Zealand law, and New Zealand law then and New Zealand law in the future, um, you really have to put aside the dishonest behavior and say, okay, so how does a CFO deal with not being surprised in, in, these, in these areas? And I wanted to put up just a slide or two on some things that I think CFOs should be doing or seeing um, in order to protect directors and yourselves as a group, because it is a joint exercise. And I located five or six things that I think are uh, probably present in some cases, and, and, and my fellow speakers caught a few more. Um, the first is induction. Um, it's pretty awesome to come onto a board and be faced relatively quickly with major decisions and prospecti, and CFOs have a large burden in making sure that entering people get a basis of this accumulated knowledge very quickly. Um, it's not done often enough or deeply enough in many boards. Um, second is continuing education of directors. Uh, some of the better boards bring speakers in every meeting or bring speakers in on periodic topics, often shepherded by the CFO. That's a process I heartily recommend and something that you all should um, push for. It will make your job and the commonality of interests a lot easier. The structuring aspects is, is an important one. Um, some of us are involved with big boards, but in medium and small boards, there are some fundamental structures that I think uh, you need to get used to. What is the process that's going to happen monthly? What will it focus on? And some of my colleagues have made some good comments. Uh, when does information come to you? What is the extent of it? Physically, how is it presented? Is it a sort of an undifferentiated mass, or is there guidance to people as to what's important this meeting and this month? Um, 
and the use of committees to farm out some of these decisions and go more deeply into things that, that need a deeper view because not everybody can be involved in everything and that's, that's a fundamental concept of the law also. Uh, chairmen and chairwomen and chairpeople um, have some major um, functional abilities around the meeting in terms of directly probing directors with questions, eliciting points of view, making sure that it doesn't become a spectator sport, um, creating a sort of a teamwork feel around problems, and actually uh, provoking uh, the difficult areas. Uh, it, it is not a good place to be polite, reticent, or complacent. And, and chair people who uh, personally in, in their characters don't like to provoke this need help from CFOs in getting those things on the table. Um, last couple of points. I think that diversity is still very important. Uh, this looks to the eye to be a fairly diverse group as far as I can tell, aside from probably professional qualifications. But in everything else, um, having a diverse group is good. Um, I think there's uh, almost always room at the table for somebody who is particularly interested in nuance and detail. Uh, I wouldn't want to see all the people involved in that because you lose some of the sight, uh, some of the oversight. Uh, but I think you will find that there will be less financially literate people and more financially literate people, and that's a good thing. It's a good objective. Um, there was a comment in Centro um, by the judge saying that directors are well remunerated and boards will continue to attract competent, diligent, and intelligent people. And I, and I hope that's true because I make my living in this field. Um, but I'm here to tell you that it's not actually true at the moment, and uh, Joan referred to it uh, gracefully and obliquely. Uh, but you will see as the SOEs go public that there will be increases in fees. Uh, and fees for directors have been depressed for years um, by large appointers in the area. And I think it does deter people. Uh, it deters people at the end of their career, and it particularly deters people who want to start on boards and find that they actually can't justify liberating the time because it doesn't pay what it should. Uh, pay in New Zealand uh, on a size and risk-adjusted basis, as best we can do it, is a third, well, a half to a third of Australia. There is no reason for that other than a prevailing culture here of talking the talk but not walking the walk. If governance matters, it should be paid properly for a whole range of reasons. Last thing I want to talk about um, is uh, the piece that's been, I think, well-focused on about CFOs giving um, highlight and interpretation and forward view. And whether you do that with a separate paper or separate piece of the agenda or balloons and, and red markings on uh, the accounts, you need to do that. You need to do it so that you are comfortable in your mind that every single director from the most financially literate to the most financially illiterate has actually seen that glowing in the papers and called it to, to attention. That is for their benefit, but primarily or, or additionally for yours because you face sanctions if you fail to educate the board um, in, a, in a prudent and thorough way.